What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupCentrals.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in today's video, I'm going to go through the workflow for creating like a circular sectional chair like you might have on your back patio or something like that. Um, we're going to use some extensions in order to do this. If you're looking for more great SketchUp extensions, make sure to check out my free SketchUp extensions guide at the SketchupCentrals.com slash extensions. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so to model a chair like this, it's going to be a fairly simple process. There's just a couple quick steps that we're going to follow in order to do that. So to start off, I'm going to delete out my default model. And probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle centered on the origin or the point where the axes intersect. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to draw this circle. And we want to figure out what the inner dimension of this circle needs to be. So like for example, let's say because this chair is going to be circular with kind of a gap in the middle where you could put like a fire pit or something like that, we'll go ahead and call this radius something like four feet. So we'll just draw a four foot circle centered around the origin point. And centering around the origin point is going to make this easier for you just because you're going to have something you can inference from where you know exactly where the center is. Um, the next thing you need to do, well, one thing you might want to consider is you'll notice right now this circle is kind of jagged and that's because it doesn't have a whole lot of segments in it. You might want to think about going up and adjusting the number of segments in your circle up to like 48 or something. You can see how when I go into my entity info, go into my segments and change that to 48, this circle gets a lot smoother. So, and from there, what we're going to do is we're going to use the offset tool in order to offset at this so that we have the thickness of our chair. Um, and one thing I already don't like is this, this circle already seems kind of big to me. So I'm actually going to offset this in by one foot and I'm going to erase out this edge. Then I'm going to offset based on this. So all I've done is reduce the radius of my circle here. So I'm going to offset this out and let's say that our chair is going to be something like two foot six inches thick or something like that. We'll go ahead and try that dimension. I'm not sure if that's going to be exactly right, but we'll go ahead and go for it for this tutorial. And so what I really want to do is I really want to create two kinds of pieces in here. The first kind that I want to create is I want to create a um, almost like a circular ottoman type thing with no back on it for half of this circle. And then um, the other half I want to be like a back chair. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to draw a line right along the red axis here and here in order to split this up. And so you can delete out the geometry that's in the center of this. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take each one of these and I'm going to put them in a group. That way they're just separated. So now if I go in here and start making changes to one of these, like let's say I was just to move this edge or whatever, it wouldn't adjust the geometry in the other one. And really what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to come into this group and I'm going to split this again and delete out this part of the circle. And the reason I'm going to delete out this part of the circle is because I really only want to model this once and I want to make it a component and then I want to make a copy of it over here. So, and I think there's some extra geometry over there we need to erase. But what this is going to do is this is going to leave us, this is going to leave us a circle or a, a quarter circle piece of geometry that we can start building off of. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to push pull this up just a little bit um, just to kind of get it off the ground. You could also move it so you could double click on it and use the move tool just to move it up off the ground a little bit, maybe like two inches or something like that. So I'm going to give it a little bit of height and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to push pull it up. And I'm probably going to push pull it up maybe that seems a little tall, maybe like one foot two inches or something like that. So I just use the push pull tool in order to push pull this up in order to give me kind of the rough shape of my chair. And that's actually going to work pretty well. Um, now what we need to do is we need to extrude the back of the chair up. And so in order to extrude the back of the chair up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this edge right here. And I'm just going to use the offset tool just on this edge in order to generate that chair back. And we're going to say the chair back is maybe like three inches thick or something like that. Well, you can see how when I offset this, what this does is this takes this edge and offsets it in, leaving me with an edge that I can push pull up. And in this case, we're going to push pull this up, maybe an additional... I don't want it to be super tall. Maybe we'll do one foot two inches again. So just something to give me kind of a chair back in here. 
And so what we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to round off the edges in this to make it look more realistic. And so in order to do that, we're going to use, I'm going to use the extension Fredo Corner. You could also use the extension Round Corner. And quick note, I will be linking to all of the extensions that I use in the notes down below. And note that these are all free extensions. You don't have to pay to use any of these extensions. But before we do that, what I want to do is I want to create a copy of this face outside of this group because I want to have a flat version of this face that I can use to create my cushion. So I'm just going to double click on this in order to copy it and I'm just going to do a control C and then I'm going to click outside of my group and I'm going to do an edit paste in place. And so what I did is I took a copy of this face and I pasted it outside of this group. So now I can push pull that up and I can also round it off with round corner without having to come in here and have all of that intersect with my uh, chair geometry or anything like that. And we can go ahead and triple click on that and just right click and click make group. And so what that's done is that's given us two groups. We have one group for our cushion and one group for our chair. And so I wanna go in with Fredo corner and I wanna select this group and I wanna click on this edge in order to round off the corners. And so when I round off the corners, what I wanna do is I just wanna generally round everything in here so that it looks a little bit more realistic. So rounded edges always look more realistic than non-round edges. And I'm gonna change my offset to something small like 0.25 for right now, just to kind of take a look at this. I don't wanna round these off too much. I just wanna round them off a little bit. And so, One thing you could do inside a Fredo corner is if you click on this button for toggle preview mode, that's actually gonna give you a preview of what the rounding is gonna look like. And you can drag this up or down in order to get a preview of what that offset is gonna look like. And I kinda like the way this looks at 3 8 of an inch. So I'm just gonna leave this at 3 8 of an inch and I'm just gonna click in order to round all of that off. And so now, if you look at this, all of my edges have been rounded off as opposed to being left kind of square and unrealistic looking. And if you turn on hidden geometry, you can see that a lot more. This is all kind of rounded off. So that gives me a pretty good look for my chair. Now I want to go in and I want to do the same thing. By selecting my cushion and rounding that off. And you can go ahead and leave that at 3 eighths of an inch as well. Um, that gives you a pretty decent rounded look to your cushion as well. And so now we can come in here, we can close out a Fredo corner, and we can apply some materials to this. So in this case, this one, I don't think we have a wicker material. We might be able to use this carpet loop pattern, but we're just gonna apply that to this object in order to have kind of a material right here. And one thing you can do is you can go into your materials section and you can adjust the size of the tiling of this. So like for example, if I want that to be bigger, I can change that to two feet. If I want that to be smaller, I can change that to six inches or something like that. I think the six inches actually looks pretty realistic. And um, so one thing you may notice, and we may fix this a little bit later or we may not, is just kind of the UV mapping on this curve gets a little messed up. So if you really zoom in, this texture doesn't look very good on that curve. But if you're going to stay further out like this, it doesn't really matter. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to apply a different material like maybe we'll go ahead and try this wallpaper material. We'll apply that to our cushion just like this. And again, notice that this uh, UV mapping gets a little bit messed up and uh, we'll come in and fix that in a minute. Um, so what we have in here now is we have this nice piece of furniture with this cushion and the actual structure supporting that right here. And depending on how detailed you wanted to get, you definitely could come in here and like add some legs to this if you wanted to. So if you wanted to like give this a little short leg that would sit underneath it, you could push pull that down. maybe move that along the green axis and then even from there or make a copy along the green axis 
So I might go ahead and take those and actually cut them. So do a control X and then click outside of this group and do an edit paste in place. So, and you might have to resample that material and reapply it to them, but then you can just use the move tool and copy or the rotate tool and copy mode by tapping the control key to rotate these 90 degrees so that they're sitting along this axis. And you might have to take these and move them just a little bit in order to get them to line back up with the bottom of your shape. But you can see how adding those legs was really easy as well. Probably what I would recommend in this case is downloading your uh, pillows from the 3D warehouse or your cushions. You don't have to do that, but coming in here and modeling those can be a little bit annoying. So you could either download them from the 3D warehouse or depending on what kind of rendering program you're using, you might be able to add them that way. I'm just gonna go into the 3D warehouse and I'm just gonna do a search for couch cushions. And usually I sort by popularity. So there's some pillows in here. Maybe I would just search for cushions. So like right here, there's a bench seat cushions model that you might think about using. And then you could just download those into your model. And then you can just kind of drop them in here and you can position them however you'd like. And so probably what I would do, cause this comes in as a five pillow group is I would just explode this group, maybe explode it again so that I have each one of these in here individually. And then I would just move them individually. So that they kind of line up with the arc on here. So and you might think about trying to select them on the very bottom of the geometry, kind of like this. And also don't be afraid to come in here and scale them up or down a little bit in order to get them to fit. I mean, they're just pillow models, unless there's a really specific pillow that you're trying to create. You can just do that. You can just kind of scale them to the size that you want. So make sure they're not inside of your model. But you can see how doing this was really easy. And then the last part of this, and maybe I'm probably not going to make the cushion in this video because this video is getting really long. You just kind of follow the same steps. Um, but probably if you wanted to, if you wanted to come in and remap these textures so that they actually map across this curve, I would recommend using the extension Fredo tools and the tool inside of it, which is called through paint. And I will link to a tutorial about through paint in the notes down below. So what you can do is you can use this extension, you can use through paint in order to map this material properly. So what you would do is you would come in here and you would start by sampling that material. So we're gonna sample this wallpaper dog bone material. And what we wanna do is we want to use a, use a UV texture mapping in order to map this material so it looks okay on the curves. And so what I'm gonna do is make sure I have that material selected or sampled and you can see which one you have selected right here and you can just click on it and it's gonna go through and it's gonna try to UV map this material along these faces. So it's gonna try to map that texture so that it aligns with this better. And be a little bit careful if you have like a super high resolution texture or something like that, this could take a little while. So just try to be careful when you use this and how you use this. So you can see how this took this texture and this actually mapped it along this face. So instead of getting that weird distortion, it's actually curving along this face in a more natural way. So you could do the same thing with this wicker material if you really wanted to. I'm not really worried about that right now. But you can see how what this did is this gave us our, a, this gave us about a quarter of our bench. And so what we wanna do now is we wanna take this whole thing and we wanna select it, right click, and we wanna click make component. And we're just gonna call this bench piece. Make sure the the box for replace selection with compo component is checked. We're going to go ahead and click create. And then what we want to do with this bench piece is we want to use the rotate tool in copy mode to create a copy. So just uh, select your bench, tap the Q key, and then find your origin point and set that as your base point. 
And then you can see how I can set this other point and move this. Well, what I want to do is I want to tap the control key. When I tap the control key, what that's going to do is that's going to make a copy. And I just want to move my mouse until this is at about 90 degrees. So um, once we're at 90 degrees, we can click and that'll give us our second bench piece. And so I'm just going to make a copy of that over here. And so you could either come in here and you could create your kind of Ottoman backless bench over here, or you could just take the whole thing and just use the rotate tool in copy mode again and just make another copy at 180 degrees and then move the pieces a little bit away from each other, kind of like this. And so you might have to do some manual aligning to get all this to line up quite the way you want it to. But you can see how really creating something like this in SketchUp is fairly easy. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Does this kind of match your workflow? What kind of videos would you like to see me do moving forward? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. Let's so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.